Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening, brothers and sisters, friends and families. It's good to be here again sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Welcome to our fasting and praying season. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. This, today is day 19 and we are two days to go to the end of the fast. I believe that each and every one of us have been fasting. If you're yet to be fasting, I will encourage you to please join us for the last few days that's left. The Bible says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And I pray that each and every one of us shall receive our due salvation, our due deliverance, our due uh, miracle in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, we've been looking at a series of teaching titled, He Came to Set the Captives Free. Looking at the mission statement of Jesus Christ in the books of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, where he clearly spelled out what his mission statement on the earth was. And when he was leaving, he told us clearly that these signs shall follow them that believe. Not only are we to receive miracles, we are supposed to be a channel through miracles happen in the life of others. So I believe that once you finish this 21 days fasting and praying, not only would you receive answers to your prayer, you shall be the reason other people get answers to their prayers in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, I would like to encourage each and every one of us to please go through our series of teaching. I believe there will be a great benefit to each and every one of us as we get to understand the topic of deliverance and um, spiritual warfare. Um, the topic is vast, is deep, and sometimes we don't have enough days in a month to actually cover every topic. But I believe that we have done, at least we have done some good work so far this month. Now, tonight I would like to finish off on a topic, which I will, one of the second to the last topic, before we finish off for the series of teaching this month, which is very simple. Fighting the urge to quit. That's our topic tonight. Fighting the urge to quit. To be honest with you, every one of us will go through a moment in our lives when we will feel like quitting. And that is the honest truth. No matter who you are, whether you're a pope, a bishop, a pastor, a deacon, a deaconess, an ordinary member of the, of the church and the congregation, there'll be times in our life when the going looks too tough for us to keep going. And at that point in time, many of us will feel to ourselves, man, I just want to throw in the towel. I want to quit. And tonight, I would like to encourage us. Before we do that, I hope that you will remember this sermon today and be able to encourage you through those dark times to be able to fulfill what God has called you to do. Now shall we pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven, we thank you very, very much for this great opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings we have received over the uh, period of fasting and praying. Thank you for the answered prayers. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for opening our understanding. And thank you for taking us deeper in the realm of the Spirit. Lord, tonight as we sit at your feet, we ask that you please open our eyes of understanding, that you reveal your perfect counsel to us, to the glory and praise of your holy name. And I pray that tonight every word that we shall hear shall mingle with faith in our hearts, and they shall bring forth good fruits in our lives, to the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Our topic tonight, very simple, fighting the urge to quit. Every one of us, no matter what we are, who we are, what position we occupy, will face a situation in our life that looks overwhelming. Now, before we get all spiritual and overly, you know, um, anointed, let's look at the scriptures. We have an example in the books of 1 Kings chapter 19. A prophet known as the prophet of, of, of fire. I mean, the God of Elijah sent down fire. The God of Elijah sent down fire. We know the story of Elijah very well. The number of times he called down fire from heaven. But if you read the books of 1 Kings chapter 19, the same Elijah that was calling down fire had the urge to quit. As a matter of fact, he told God, I resign from this assignment you have given unto me. I am no better than anybody else. There's nobody left. They've killed all your prophets. Until God told him, there are 7,000 years reserved for me that have not bowed their, their knees to bow. So Elijah, a man who had just in chapter 18 of the same first kings, had just defeated um, over 600 prophets of Baal, called down fire from heaven. I mean, the, the sacrifice was drenched in water. The altar was leaking with water. Yet when the fire fell from heaven, he consumed the rock, the altar, the sacrifice, and everything in it. But by the time you get to chapter 19, you wonder what happened. I mean, you've seen God perform great wonders. You've seen God do great things. How can you suddenly lose heart at the threat of a woman called Jezebel? 
he was human. Many people think men of God don't have feelings, don't have emotions, don't feel a pain, don't go through roller coasters of events in their life also. As much as they have, they are anointed, they also have a life. Well, that's a coincidence and that's Old Testament. Somebody will say that. Oh, that's fine. Let's go to the New Testament. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He got to a place, he fell on his face and he said, Father, <laughs> if it's possible, let this cup pass over me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And I believe at that point in time, he won back for us the ability to choose the right, the right choice when we are presented with options. Because he had the option. He said it even in the scripture that he could call down six legions of angels to fight against humanity. And from our study yesterday, we read that one angel has the capacity to take, to take out 185,000 soldiers in one night. One angel. So if he has six legions, I mean, if you do the maths, and a legion of angels con uh, contains about 3,000 soldiers. A legion has 3,000 soldiers. So you're talking astronomical amount of money. Practically, they will wipe out the entire earth. But yet, even at his command, he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Well, you say, well, that was Jesus. He won. Okay, fine. Let's look at the disciples of Jesus. Jesus had disciples. After G Peter saw his master being taken into the court of the, of the chief priest, a little girl was asking him, he said, sir, aren't you one of those people there? He said, no, I never knew this man. Instantly, he denied him. As a matter of fact, after our Lord and Savior was crucified, <coughs> Peter went back to fishing. He forgot the, the anointing, the calling, the miracles. Don't forget, it was the same Peter that Jesus Christ sent out two by two his disciples, and they were healing sick, they were anointing people, and they were casting out demons, even during the lifetime of Jesus. Don't forget, it was the same apostles that were saying, Master, when the city did not accept them, can we call down fire from heaven and consume them? So it was not like there was no anointed. They were anointed. They had the power. They have been with the Master. You can't rub, uh, rub around the Jesus and not be anointed and something not drop on you. So what I'm trying to get across to us is before we get overly spiritual, Let's take things very simple. One of the problems that I've seen that we have in the body of Christ is that we get over spiritual and we don't deal with real life issues. And people sometimes begin to panic when they begin to are faced with challenges. Sometimes you have to fight the urge to quit. The urge to quit. Now, a few reasons why people mentally want to, uh, people want to quit. And I'll give you a few examples tonight. Number one. When we have or when we struggle to get answers to prayers or when there's delays to getting the answers to prayers, sometimes that urges us to quit praying. I've said before and I'll say it again, one of the key motivations that keeps us praying in the prayer room is results. We like results. And I've told, I've said before, I come from the school of thoughts that you have not prayed until you have gotten an answer. So you keep knocking. Until the door be open unto you. I mean, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, the Bible says, Knock, and it shall be, it says, Seek, you shall find. Ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be open unto you. Until you have knocked and the door has been opened, you cannot stop knocking. So, sometimes when we are physically, mentally, emotionally exhausted, we feel overloaded. Challenges of life we stand in. I mean, you've been praying about financial breakthrough. And the morning you woke up the next day, you got a letter from the from the um, from the um, de well, person you're owing money that says amount due. You open the second letter, it says past due. Now the third letter says notice before action. And then you're saying, Lord, but I'm praying for financial breakthrough. Where is my financial breakthrough? Emotional exhaustion, mental exhaustion. We have exhausted our exhausted our pulse, and we are crying unto the Lord. But yet it seems like God is not answering. And then you wonder whether or not you should quit. Fatigue begins to creep in. You hear a voice behind your ears that's saying, "What is the point of going on? What is the point of getting or pressing forward?" Let me share a secret I learned some years ago with you. And this has helped me a lot whenever I go through challenges or when I'm going through any situation of my life. Two things are very important to remember. I'm going to use boxing as an illustration. Most of us, the other day, watched the 
or perhaps I've seen the highlights of the fight between uh, Deontay Wilder and uh, the man from England here, Tyson Fury. Um, the key to any boxing bout is this, two things. First of all, you must hit your opponent as many times as possible. That obviously causes your opponent to lose the will to fight. The second thing that you must do is to avoid getting hit. And if you do get hit, please don't act like it hurt you. Because that encourages your opponent to keep hitting more. If you punch your opponent and he says, nah, it doesn't hurt me, you feel, but I'm using my strength, all my might, and this guy is not feeling the punch. So you might have the hurt to say, well, you know what, there's nothing I can do really and truly. But yet, he's feeling the pain, but he's simply not showing the, the attitude or the emotions that he's feeling the pain. Likewise, the devil, every time you go into the prayer room, armed with the word of God, and you begin to pray earnestly, you are throwing punches at the devil's face. Eventually, you will knock him out. But he might act for a few rounds that, nah, your, your punch is not having an effect upon me. <laughs> Believe me, your punch is having a greater effect upon him. How do I know this? First John chapter 4, verse 4, uh, verse 4, the Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. In other words, you have greater capacity than the devil that is out there. Number two, one of the reasons why we also quit is because we don't have a clear vision. Many of us, we pray prayers and we forget that we even prayed it. So when the prayer gets answered, we are more surprised of getting an answer than we actually not so, uh, we should be more surprised when we don't get an answer. Many of us are simply just praying. I always tell people, write your prayers point down, be so specific that when the answer comes, you will not mistake it for something else. Be so specific, what you want from the Lord. That your prayer point will be so accurately defined that when you hear God or when you see it, you will know that this is it. The problem is that when there's no vision, when there's no clarity, when there's no focus, most likely we have the urge to quit. This is notwithstanding, this is not peculiar to anybody, it is to every one of us. Now, the vision that we've had from the beginning of this prayer session that we've had for the last 19 days is that we must get our deliverance. We must get our breakthrough. We must no longer be held back. Every limit in our lives must be destroyed. We must be able to advance at the pace that God has ordained us to move. If there's no clear vision in your life, you are likely not to be able to, you know, to, at, to attain the very best that God or settle for less that he has asked for you. Each day brings a different challenge. But with God on our side, we are able to overcome. Number three, we sometimes operate outside our comfort zone. Some of us, this is the first time we are dealing with the topic of spiritual warfare and this is a bit alien to our body. We have never heard it before. Some of us have heard it, but not in this depth. Some of us have heard it, but some aspect of it are slightly new to us. For example, I when I talk about the marketplace and yourself, some people have not heard that kind of message before. They think, well, this is strange. Is it scriptural? And so on and so forth. When we discuss about soul ties, the people looked at it and said, oh, this might be applicable to me. This kind of message sometimes might take a while to sink in. I, I, there was a man that was speaking to the late man of God by the name of Kenneth Higgins. Now, while he was speaking to him, they were having lunch, I believe, in his, in his story. So while they were talking, he said the man kept asking him a question. Then eventually, the man got to a stage, he understood that what I'm asking this man... It's like I'm asking him to teach me advanced level maths when I've not mastered the basics. Some of us have to listen to the sermon over and over again to help us understand the basics of this message so that you can then be able to build on it. When we operate outside our comfort zone, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, we often will have the urge to quit. If you put a featherweight boxer in a ring with an heavyweight boxer, is out of his comfort zone because it's not a featherweight and somebody wants to commit murder. So one thing I have to say to you this evening is that this, God will never allow more on you than you can bear. So you can be rest assured that whatever you have in your life at this point in time, God has given you the capacity to handle it. Now, number four, many people have received wrong counsel. Wrong counsel in the sense that you have, you're speaking to people who are not the same as you. As you. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. 
if you if you go to a man who is plastic and you are iron, you will do more damage to his life or he will do more damage to your life in terms of making you more blunt. They are actually making you more resistant to the challenges that's coming your way. Every one of us need to find a group of people who are like-minded, going in the same direction as we. I've said it before, my friend is always somebody going in the same direction as myself. If you're not going in the same direction as me, you're not my friend. And that is the honest truth. Get advice from the right people. The Bible says God cannot be mocked. Evil communication, they say corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. Number five. I'm going to have to speed up a little bit because of my time tonight. It's, it's the fact that we want to quit because we have been betrayed by people that we trust. Pastors have betrayed you. Men of God have betrayed you. Women of God have betrayed you. Friends have betrayed you. Family members have betrayed you. People that you have put your trust in. I remember there was a, a young man was sharing the story with me some time ago. And it was quite interesting. He said um, he spoke to a pastor in confidence in the council room over a situation of his life and so on and so forth. And then he got on the altar and he used him as a, as a sermon. He said he felt really uncomfortable even though he didn't mention his name that he decided to leave the church. You know, things like that oftentimes might rob people, rob people the wrong way and that's the honest truth. And as a result of that, he felt betrayed because he has spoken in, in, in confidence and it has been exposed totally to the public. I as a person don't do that. <laughs> that is totally out of, out of place for me to do. Your business is your business. And uh, I keep it as those. If you have come to me in confidence, it means that you trust me enough and I can betray that trust. Number six, lack of financial stability. When you are given options other than a godly way, you are likely to take it, especially when you have so many obligations to meet financially. The mortgage is due, the rent is due, the credit cards are due, the electricity bill is due, and so on and so forth. And as a result of that, you will sometimes want to stop following the righteous path. He said, broad is the path that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life. Matthew chapter 7 verse 14. Now, you and I must make that decision. He said, constantly, he says in my ears, I, I, I lay before you the choices of life and death. He said, choose life. Righteousness might not have any instant gratification, but in the long run, he speaks well of you. And as, as the Bible says in, first, um, in, in Proverbs 22, verse 1, he said, a good name is better than chosen gold and silver. Now, quitters don't please God. Because God could be around the corner. I'm sure you know the story of Sam, um, Saul. When he went out to go and sacrifice, when he was not supposed to, as a, as a king. He was, he, was, he was operating the office of a priest. And they, immediately he did it, you saw Samuel coming. He said, you have acted foolishly. And as a result of that, he began the roller coaster event that led him to be dethroned by God. No man, God dethroned Saul. So, Quitters, quitting is not an option for a child of God. There's nothing more fatal in the hand of a man of, of a child of God than a half-finished task. I want to pray for you that every urge to quit in your life will be destroyed tonight permanently in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do I fight the urge to quit? As I begin to close the summer for the evening. How do I fight the urge to quit? Number one, please stop listening to ungodly people. Please, please, please stop listening to ungodly people. Most of us have gotten ourselves in a mess as a result of the people we have associated with. That's the honest truth. Now, how do you know the right person to associate with? Well, it's said by their fruits. You shall know them. Look at their life. Is there something in their life that attracts you or something in their life that you believe you want also in your life? I mean, not doing anything ungodly. Ask yourself that question. Stop listening to ungodly person. Many of us have spent a lot of our time taking counsel from ungodly people. And as a result of that, we have been derailed from the path of righteousness and the path of God for our lives. And that is one of the reasons why many of us are in a mess today. In a big, big mess today. Number two, hold on to the word of God. See, the thing is this, 
In Psalm 105 verse 19, I like the word of God in this scripture. Psalm 105 verse 19, the Bible says, Until the time that his word came, the law, the word of the Lord tried him. Until your set time comes, the word of God will look like it's, does, it's re relevant in your life. But every single day, speak the word. Where the word of a king is, there is power. You and I must cultivate the habit of speaking God's word every single day of our, of our lives. Last night I was listening to a Christian channel and I was watching um, a man who sees angels. And he said something that struck me last night. And what he said is this. He said that angels, there are some angels that are watchers. What they do is they sit down or they listen out for you and they take notes. And then suddenly you will say something in line with God's word. Remember the books of Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, I'm watching over my words to perform them. Suddenly you say something in line with God's word. The watcher angel will be around. He will take notes of your word and will fly into heaven and deliver it. And God will attest to it and say, go and deliver to him. I've given you my example before. There was a night I was studying. In the middle of the night, I was really tired. And I just said to myself, foolishly, if I get 16 in the examination, I'll be happy. And I went to bed. I slept. I went to the examination hall. I did the examination. And guess what I got? 60. And I knew I could have done better. And then I wanted to start complaining. Then I heard a reminder in my spirit. Remember what you said that night you were studying. If you just get 60 in the examination, you'll be happy. <laughs> I said, okay. Now I remember. There are always angelic forces around. You don't know what's Holy, what the Holy Spirit is moving. So you have to be very careful what you say. That's why if you've ever been around me, you will hear me you always tell our correct people, don't use negative words around me. I cannot stand it. Because the angels that are watching will go and effect something negative. And then you begin to cry and say, but I didn't mean it. Please, hold on to God's word and speak the word daily. Number four, Please hang around with people who are like-minded. Number five, take a break and go on holiday. It sounds very simple, but it has been very effective in people's lives. Taking a break and go on holiday. Go somewhere nice. Sometimes when I'm doing creative writing and I'm working on a project, one thing or the other, sometimes I sit down and I can't really flow like I normally do. I walk away from the computer, switch off the computer, go and watch TV or listen to a sermon or listen to some worship or do something different. And suddenly, it seems like my, my mind is working in the background. And the answer that I'm looking for to the challenge that's plaguing me will simply come. Many of us, we need to be relaxed. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. We are running helter-skelter, pillar to post. You see, we start from level 7, and by the time we run to one prophet or the other, we move from a 7 to a 3. So we have to find ourselves back on a 7, and then try to get back to the level God wants us to be. I'm praying for you. Whatever has been stolen from your life shall be restored tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let me close finally. Matthew the King made a statement, which I believe is applicable to us tonight. He says, if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, then crawl. Whatever you do, just keep moving forward. Tonight, fight every urge to quit. Many of us are struggling in our lives. One thing or the other, challenges here, bills here, uh, family relations problems here, and so on and so forth. You want to pray tonight and say, Father, have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. I resist every urge to quit. And I pray that as you do so tonight, God shall give you ultimate victory in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's thank the Lord tonight. Again, let's give him glory and praise for his word. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we honor your holy name. We bless you for your faithfulness in our lives, for your mercy in our lives, for your compassion, for your Holy Spirit and power. Thank you for never leaving us, never forsaking us. Thank you, O Lord, because we know that you're worthy to be praised and there's no one like you. You are the ancients of days. You are the mighty one of Israel. You are the only wise God, the only living God. There's no one like you, O oh Lord our God, we bless your holy name. Heavenly Father, please accept our thanks and praises. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ.
Now we're going to pray tonight. And say, Father, the grace not to quit. Please, Father, give it to me tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The battles of our lives, they are in series. I think I mentioned over in the beginning of our series of teaching that um, spiritual warfare is a war campaign. And in a war campaign, you will have multiple battles, not just one or two. And as a result of that, you might fight multiple battles before you over have the overall victory. What you want to pray tonight is, Father, the grace not to quit when the battles get tough, when the going gets tough. Lord, release upon me tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray that prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, that I will not quit. The grace not to quit when the battle gets tough, when the going gets tough. Lord, please release upon me tonight. I will, not, I will not quit. I will not throw in the towel. I will not be tired. I will not be weary. I will not faint, O Lord my Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I will finish the fight. I will finish the course. I will finish what you have called me to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, O Lord, that your name alone shall, be prevail, shall prevail in my life. O Lord my Father, I will not fail. I will not fail on the edge of success. I will not fail when my breakthrough is around the corner. I will not fail when I'm due, O Lord, for testimony in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Jesus mighty name we have prayed let's pray again and say father renew my strength in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord God of heaven renew my strength renew my strength spiritually physically emotionally materially renew my strength in the mighty name of Jesus Christ shall we pray that prayer Lord God of heaven we pray tonight in the name that's above every name I ask oh Lord my father that you will renew my strength Lord from every urge to quit you will renew my strength emotionally. I will not be emotionally exhausted. I will not be mentally exhausted. I will not be physically exhausted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, renew my strength. Against every opposition. Against every disappointment. Against every discouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, renew my strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are a merciful God. You are a faithful Father. Lord God of heaven. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Renew my strength, O Lord. Let me work stronger. Let me go forward. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Now let's pray again and say, Father, I resist the devil. Now, say, I don't know what area of your life that you're struggling with. Um, the Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Say, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil and he will flee. Now, I don't want, I don't know what area of your life you want to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I resist the devil in this area of my life. Whether in your finances, whether in your marriage, whether in your home, whether in your ministry, shall we lift up our voice and pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, I resist the devil in every aspect of my ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I resist the devil in every aspect of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I resist the devil over every power of the enemy. In my life, in the name of Jesus Christ, I resist the devil. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, over my finances, over my marriage, over my home, over my business, over my career. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I rebuke the enemy, all and their hands and their courts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's pray again and say, Father, you are the way maker. You made an highway for the children of Israel on the Red Sea. Let's pray and say, Father, make a way for me. In this impossible situation of my life, make a way for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven, I pray tonight. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, that you will make a way for me. On the highway of life, you will make a way for me. Lord, remove every obstacle in my way. Whatever is hindering me, stopping me from advancing and moving forward. Every power of the enemy that wants to stop me and hold me back. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, make a way for me, O Lord. My Father, my God, make a way for me. Make a way for me, O Lord. Lord, God of heaven, I pray at this hour in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you make a way for me to finish well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Make a way for me to my promised land. Make a way for me to my destination in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you are prepared for me, O Lord, in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Now, the Bible makes us understand that we are soldiers. And he also made, uh, Jesus said in the books of Matthew 24, verse 13, that he that endures to the end shall be saved. Let's pray and say, Father, the grace to endure to the end, to be saved. Lord, please release upon me. And Paul said in the books of 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, he said that I have finished my course, I have run the race, and now he's going to obtain the prize that has been given unto him. Let's pray that prayer with all of our heart and say, Father, the grace to endure to the end. 
the spirit of endurance. Let it come upon me tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God of heaven, I pray at this hour, the grace and the strength to endure to the end. Lord God of heaven, grant unto me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not fail. I will not quit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever the power of the enemy is, I know you have a greater power. For greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. Lord, I pray at this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I will not quit. The grace to endure to the end. Father, please release upon me in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Another prayer point we are going to pray is, Lord, Lord, bring into my life good people that will be a source of encouragement to me. Every one of us need people that will encourage us. One of the times, one of the reasons Jesus Christ sent them out two by two is that so that none of them will fall. The Bible says two is better than one. So you need people in your life. Now you want to pray the prayer and say, Lord, let my life attract good people that will encourage me, that will strengthen me. That when I feel down, when I feel out, they will speak to me and say, son, no, don't give up. I've been through this before. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Keep going. Shall we lift up our voice and pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God of heaven, we pray at this hour, the Son of the living God, that you will have mercy upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you will attract into our life good people that will help us, that will strengthen us, that will encourage us, that will keep us moving forward in the right direction. Lord, we pray that you shall expose every unfriendly friend, those that want us to fail, Lord, those who are Judas in our camp. Father, you will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that we will not fall into their trap, to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's pray one more prayer. I say, Father, the wisdom that I need to turn around the situation I'm in. Lord, please release upon me tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, shall we pray that prayer? Lord God of heaven, I pray tonight. The wisdom I need to turn around the situation, what to do, Lord God of heaven, how to restore, how to be transformed. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, to reclaim all the enemy are stolen. Father, tonight you will release upon me in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You will manifest your power. You will glorify your name. You will show yourself as the Almighty. You will prove yourself strong in my life. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom I need, O Lord my Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, to turn around the situation I'm in. You will glorify your name, O Lord, in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now let's finally let's thank the Lord for tonight. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you for all the prayers we have prayed tonight. We thank you for the answers that we have received. We bless your holy name. Father, for the strength and the grace to wait upon you. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have heard us already. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. God bless you. In Jesus' precious name. I believe you have been blessed again tonight. Please, let's continue to wait on the Lord. We have just two more days to continue our fasting and praying. Either in Dios to the end shall be saved. There will be a service tomorrow evening again. And we are going to pray again tomorrow evening. On Saturday, there will be just a, a prayer meeting where we pray together just to thank God for what he has done over the 21 days. And then we celebrate and then we go. Please, let's get a bottle of oil. I'll be blessing the anointing oil on Saturday. And I'll be praying over it. And then you can have that in your own homes. You can apply it upon every property and so on and so forth that you might possess. And I pray that God would do great, um, great miracles through the anointing oil in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let's not forget to wait on the Lord tomorrow. It's Friday. Tomorrow, just one more day to go. You have waited this long, you might as well complete it. And I encourage you to please be on time at 8 o'clock. We start the service and we finish by 8.45 latest. And I believe that God will speak tomorrow again to you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Have a good evening and I wish you a good night. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>